one. Let's reboot this, man. In 888-957-9570, you're faced with what the Warriors are looking at right now, this offseason. July is flying at us like a freight train right now. Um, it, it, there's no wrong answer because he's not here. And uh, even if he were still here, no one was going to ask him this because he's 86 years old and he's got more important things like family and 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 just uh, putting one foot in front of the other. But uh, if you could ask Jerry West right now, hey, Jerry, what, what should we do? What do you think he would say? What do you think he would say? I think he would say that uh, there comes a time for everyone to to part with their organization, and this is that time for Clay Thompson. I don't think that he would look at the situation and say, you know, the Warriors need to pay everything they can to keep Clay. I think he would look at the market and realize that Clay is probably going to get more money than the Warriors can rightly pay at this juncture. And so I think that he would look at it and realize that, you know, if Clay wanted to get top market, which of course he has every right to do, I think that he would look at it and say, it might be time for Clay to go elsewhere. Um, the interesting thing is, if we were having this conversation with Jerry, I actually think the answer is less about Clay Thompson and it's maybe more about Jonathan Kaminga. If I if there's anything I really like, and again, it's all so mythical, um, but if there's anything Jerry is often credited with, it is kind of seeing around a corner when it comes to a young player. Okay? He stood on a table, you know, not literally, but he stood on a table for Clay Thompson. He was right. He stood on a table for Kobe Bryant. My God, he was right. Would he stand on a table for Jonathan Kaminga? That's what I would actually want to know. And I think that that's fundamental to what we're talking about right now with Warrior Basketball. We're all so darn focused, and I get it. He's a legend. He's a statue guy. He's a Hall of Famer. He is part of the uh, the triplets here. He He's a splash brother. He's Clay Thompson. And if he leaves in two weeks, that is going to be something that has a ripple effect that goes for a long time. There's going to be people thinking about it all the way into the season and beyond. They will follow Clay Thompson like no former warrior, no other former warrior ever before. So um, I, I get that. But maybe the larger question is, do you stay the course or do you abruptly shift course largely in favor of, as we tend to say, maximizing the remainder right. of Steph Curry's career? I do think that if I had a chance to ask Jerry West, you know, one more thing, it would be, what do you think of Jonathan Kaminga? Because that, for me, becomes the pivotal yeah. point for all this. And, you know, it's more about that for me than it is about, you know, what you think about Clay Thompson. Because I'm pretty sure he likes Clay Thompson. And even where Clay is now as a player, Clay can still be a solid contributing player to a winning team. Big time. Now, can it be to this team? Well, he would need some some support around him. And if that support around him is not Jonathan Kaminga, if Jerry West looks at Kaminga and thinks, well, maybe he's not going to be the player that everybody forecasts him to be, what does he really think about Jonathan Kaminga and his ceiling as a player? That, to me, becomes the real pivot point for all of this, whether or not Clay's here or not. I don't know why I feel this way. I don't know why I feel this way. But again, this is a mythical conversation too. Yeah. And I'm sitting here going, okay, it, it, he loved Clay. He loved Kobe. I'm sure there were plenty of guys he loved, it, but we only get so many stories. I just feel like if you were sitting there asking Jerry, all right, what do you, what do you think of Jonathan Kaminga? I think his answer at minimum would be, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a minute. It's gonna, and I don't mean his answer. I mean Jonathan Kaminga's rise. Because what is it, if you're looking at Kobe, if you're looking at Clay, what is it that you love about those players? They are both maniacally competitive. They were both both ends of the floor players. They were both incredibly heady players. They were both. I think appropriately selfish with their offense. Um, is Jonathan Kaminga those things? Jonathan Kaminga, if I if you asked anybody, even the biggest Kaminga fan right now, hey, what do you what does he do really well? What do you love about his game? 
I most people are going to be like, well, he flies. Athleticism. Yep. He flies. Yep. Uh, not enough. Right. That's not enough for me. That's not. And so I'm not. This is not about like even projecting where he's going. This is not uh, any sort of hate towards Jonathan as a player. But if you are going, hey, Jerry, Steph is 36. We want to do some things this year. Do you think Jonathan is the guy and this really matters over the next six years? Or do you think that that resource could be better spent in a different way? Something tells me that he would green light a move that includes Jonathan Kamingo. I agree. And I look at the history of Jerry West, and I'm just looking at an article about 1996 when Jerry West famously traded Vlade Divac, and he was trying to find a taker, and he went all the way down the board on the draft board, and he finally found Charlotte, who would take him, and they were picking at number 13. And so Jerry West was able to trade Vlade Divac to Charlotte, get the number 13 pick, free up enough cap space to then go out and get Shaquille O'Neal, and he drafted Kobe Bryant. Yeah. So you got Shaq on a free agent deal because he got rid of Lade. You had a center vacancy. You got Shaq, and you drafted Kobe. That's a bold move, and we think about that now, and that might be the greatest move in the history of the association. Good Lord. And that is now 28 years back. That was a bold move because Vlade at the time, you know, when centers were really impactful, he was a good center. An established player. And, and one of the yes. best in basketball, a center who could rebound, he could defend, he was a great passer, and somebody who could help you win, yet you made that trade, you made a bold move. So I think about what you're saying, and Jonathan Kaminga, a 21-year-old, is he a phenom, is he a superstar, is he a star, what is he? We do know that his best basketball is still in front of him. If you could find a taker, for Jonathan Kaminga, I think that Jerry West would make a bold move to try to capitalize on the Steph Curry window. It's an interesting take. I mean, you know, you're you're sort of like packaging it as quote a bold move, and he was certainly willing uh, to do that. But my gosh, an established center at that time in exchange for someone who had not yet played college basketball, right? See, that's to me, I get fascinated by that part because Jerry clearly saw something that he found to be intoxicating. And I think he saw something in Clay Thompson that he found to be intoxicating. Would he find anything Jonathan Kaminga related intoxicating? I don't know, but I, my, I gather the things that he loved about the Kobe's and the clays of the world. I don't know if you see those things in, in Jonathan. Do you see just, adept play on both ends of the floor? Do you see someone who can quickly become a finished product in the NBA, an all-around, like, crazy competitor? Because Kobe, through all his gifts, I think most of us would agree, if you really read up on the story and know about Kobe Bryant, the greatest gift he had was competitiveness. It, like, he's so physically gifted, but, like, I don't know if there's ever been kind of like a more cutthroat competitor than than Kobe Bryant. It's Jordan esque, yeah, at minimum. And Clay Thompson, not Kobe, but like even look at the way Clay has acted the last two years. It largely comes, I would argue, from competitiveness because he feels disrespected all the time, even by now his own organization because of what he's achieved. Like he takes that stuff on that comes from maniacal competitiveness. I don't know if I've ever heard anybody see or say that about Jonathan Kaminga. No, and he's still young. And I sure. don't think that many players have that sort of competitiveness. And Steph Curry is always labeled as the baby faced assassin, but he is maybe as competitive as anyone we've ever seen, but he does it in a different way. Draymond Green, we know, is very competitive, and he does it in a completely opposite way. So I think that competitiveness comes in many different forms. And you know, Kobe, I think, was cut much more from the Draymond Green cloth where you could see it, and he kind of oozed it every single trip down the floor. Steph Curry is very competitive, but he doesn't really manifest it in that same way. And so you know, is Kaminga going to be one of those guys who will live and die by every single possession and every single game and every single win? Well, you don't really know, and especially you don't really know until they get that first big paycheck. Yeah, but keep in mind, you say Kaminga's still really young. 
sure, four years older than what Kobe Bryant was when Jerry West said, we're going to get a deal together with Charlotte, and on draft day we're going to swap Kobe Bryant and Vlade Divac. So he, he saw that then. Right. And, 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 but he's one of one. Yes. I mean, you can't look at anybody in, I, in the league now and say, oh, that guy is as competitive as Kobe. No, of course not. And I, I don't even love putting Kobe and Clay Thompson in the same sentences. I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to wonder out loud, what are the characteristics that Jerry really, really prioritized when scouting a young player? And that will be a question for Larry Riley for sure. Yeah. Um, who's going to join us in 10 minutes. What are the characteristics that Jerry prioritized, and does Jonathan have them? That that's to me. I would love to be able to have that conversation with people who know. Uh, let's go to uh, Kevin in Oakland here on Willard and Dibs. Hey, Kevin, what's up? Hey, gentlemen. Uh, good show. Uh, I have a quick story. Uh, so I did a little things with the Warriors during the training camp, and I'm in the executive locker room, and I'm using the restroom. And I turn around, and there's Jerry West. One thing, Jerry West, about his character, you don't call him sir or mister. I mean, he ripped me when I called him sir. <laughs> so my name is Jerry. I'm from West Virginia. So I go about, and I, and I, and I, I get, ask him, hey, can you give me some advice on my application, on my craftsmanship? And he just like, oh, well, it's just, it's, these guys are just too lazy. They're too soft. And I wouldn't pay none of these guys a dime. So that kind of goes into an insight to what you guys were talking about. And he says if the Warriors didn't pay him enough money, he'd rather be in West Virginia playing golf where everyone leaves him alone. That's exactly so, right. Uh, and uh, he, so I finished up and I zipped up and I walked <laughs> away and, he, and then I went to go about my business. And I'm like, I just met Jerry West in the bathroom with my zipper down. And I'm like going, holy, you know. So Schmidt. I thought it was a cute story. Yeah, That's a great it's, story. It's, yeah, I mean, don't you love it when like, and Kevin, thank you, when somebody who really, really, um, you know, gets your attention and, and you get an opportunity to meet them and uh, your pants are unzipped. Right. That's nice. <laughs> it's, You're I mean, like, hey, timing, could we do this a little bit differently? Life comes I, at you fast. Let me wash my hands first for crying out loud before Jerry West, the logo, walks in. But he's right, and I don't. I don't want this to sound like a bad characteristic. I I'm not going to say Jerry didn't like people because he was amazing with people. But yes, left to his own devices, I don't think he wanted to be around very many people. Yes, and if you look at the history of Jerry West, his brother was killed in 1951, which turned him into a shy and introverted young man, and he apparently learned to shoot baskets at his neighbor's house in a basketball hoop that was nailed to a storage shed. And he spent days shooting from every angle, ignoring mud and snow, as well as his mother's whippings when he would come home late mm. for dinner in a town of 700 people. So you think about where he came from and what he eventually became. It's an unbelievable story, let alone what he eventually would become as a, as the logo and a front office god for multiple organizations. Larry Riley, uh, who brought Jerry West to the Warriors in less than 10 minutes here on Willard and Dibs. Let's go to AJ in San Francisco. Hi, AJ. What are you doing? Oh, uh, man. I'm hearing you guys talk about Kaminga, and it makes me think you guys don't know basketball at all. I mean, I played all my life, and I don't know. I still got a little talent when I see it. And whether you're young or old, that's who you are. And Kaminga has drawing room, okay? Yeah, you all know. And you can't expect a guy like that to know everything right now. No matter what you do in the trade, the Warriors will not win anything next year. The guy from Atlanta, I hear about that trade. That's ridiculous. What is he going to do? He was the last place team scoring 20 a game. And you guys say, oh, let's trade for him. I mean, I don't get it. That's not help. That's the same. A second score, get a point in the game. That's not help. He can't rebound. That's not help. So tell me where you are with that. I got a lot more. Believe me. Well, you guys talk a all this talk. Yeah, you AJ. Guys. I wonder if <laughs> Thanks, I wonder. AJ. I wonder if you understand the intricacies of the conversation we're having because nobody here on this show today suggested that the Warriors should trade Jonathan Kaminga. That's not what we were saying at all. Um, and and you're you're attaching certain names who would be coming back, and we never brought that up at all. 
were having a mythical conversation about what Jerry West would advise when that subject comes up. And I'm basing it, this is the best I can do, I'm basing it on the people who we know Jerry loved as young wings and the characteristics they have and whether or not Jonathan can immediately have those same characteristics and apply them to Warrior Basketball in three months. That's the conversation. So nobody's suggesting anything. My guess is, and I'll raise my right hand and tell you I got no idea if I'm right, but my guess is if the Warriors had an offer on the table that they thought made them better right now, the same way they did 10 years ago with Kevin Love, a more established player for a young up-and-coming wing, do you do it? Jerry West 10 years ago said no. Don't do it. I'm betting on Clay. He was right. What would he say this time? Right. I think, just my guess, he'd be more open to it this time. Especially when you look at what they've done and you know where they are with Steph Curry and his window. It's a different story than it was 10 years ago, and I'm looking at it here from Mark Stein. June 19th, 2014, Warriors Way deal for Kevin Love. The T-Wolves were looking for a first-round pick and Clay Thompson. For Kevin Love. That was the deal that was on the table 10 years ago. And ultimately, Jerry West and other people in the organization said, no, we don't want to do that. Four titles later, yeah, the rest is history. But now you sit in a spot where you've got two more years, really, of Steph Curry. So now the calculus is definitely changed as it pertains to even Jonathan Kaminga at that this age. 